when I want to do something, I think starting a business, either having a podcast guest on the show, either uh, having a very difficult conversation, either saying to someone, I actually really like you. I decided for myself years ago, I just jump in the ocean because I know when I jump in the ocean, I can swim. And what is the worst thing that could happen? Okay, let's just start. Welcome to a new episode of the Bridging Podcast. Tomorrow is going to happen, whatever we do. Is it better to go into tomorrow trusting a voice, a practice, process, a way forward? Or is it better to go into tomorrow filled with fear and not believing the things that have gotten you here so far? Create a new reality. I close my eyes and I will be there. I will dream it. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Özlem Özkan, the host of the Bridging Podcast. Welcome to a new episode of the Bridging Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how I practice courage. For the past few months, I am working on some writings around trusting ourselves. And I have written a piece on courage. I would like to start with reading that first. Courage and bravery. Slowly, she forgot to be courageous. Bravery was out of her system. It was good as it was right now. It was better this way. Not needing to dive deep. Why should she realize her own capacity? No one really cared. And failing, failing was not allowed. Tears were associated with something imperfect. All she thought, no effort, means no pain. Slowly, she made her courage die. So died her creativity. She made them disappear simultaneously. All she thought was that she would not be in pain anymore. Yet this was one of the most painful experiences. When her courage died, she died as well. Not knowing that her world collided, her heart kept beating. But she stopped living. When did she stop trusting the miraculous truth? The truth that her marvelous courage can help serve the world. Where was that little girl? The girl that lived by bravery and courage. The girl that worked stubbornly. The girl that trusted with all her heart. The girl that believed in alchemy. Remember the days when she was seated in front of her mother. Her head and shoulders were covered by a sheet. And her mom poured melted leads into a bowl of water to make that girl deeply feel her own power. Why did she want to be saved anyway? That heavy burden on her chest, that awkward weird feeling when everything looked safe, that itch on her whole body. What did bravery say? What did the courageous little girl tell her? Push yourself out of that breathless personal safety. Burn all your safe cards. Step into the unexpected, into courage and bravery. Step into it right now because you love doing it, because you love it. Trust that courage wants to be lived through you. Stop complaining. Shed off that heavy dust of old patterns. Baptize your body. Baptize your soul. Baptize your courage. Bring yourself back into life. Be courageous and brave. Remove easy and live by possibility. And the rest, yes, the rest, it will take care of itself. So this is a piece I wrote on courage. The reason I wrote this piece is to remember myself and others that courage wants to live through us. We can be courageous and that we have been courageous when we were a child, when we were a baby. We didn't think like, hey, maybe we can't crawl, so let me not do it. We just did it. We didn't think like, hey, but I can't walk. Let me just stop walking. No, we kept walking, kept falling, kept walking, kept falling. And at the end, we were all walking. And everything, when we are in primary school, we try, we do, we don't think about what other people think in the beginning, especially until the age of seven years old. We just do. We are courageous all. So let me just define 
what does courage mean? And maybe I should even start with what does courage not mean? So first of all, courage does not mean the absence of fear. Some people think like people that are courageous, they do not have fear. That's not true. Courage does not mean the absence of fear. So I was fortunate that I have interviewed many people on the Bridging Podcast for the past three and a half years. And I've had also the chance to work at, in different countries with different people from different cultures and nations. Very, very highly successful people in different areas of life, either relationship, either business, either wealth and most of them told me when they want to take a step towards the direction they wanted to go there was some fear but they did not follow the fear they were comfortably walking with fear hand in hand towards the direction they wanted so courage does not mean the absence of fear courage does not mean acting without awareness so when you want to cross the road and you see a car driving your way courage does not mean nothing will happen to me i'm just going to cross the road anyway it does not mean that courage acts with awareness it does not mean acting without awareness Another thing what courage does not mean is courage does not mean denial of fear. I believe that this is not courage. This is anxiety. So really telling yourself, I'm not fearful. I'm not fearful. I'm not fearful. While you are actually fearful. That's nothing to do with courage. So what does it actually mean courage? I would say, you know, there are different definitions of courage, but I would say the definition of courage is the quality of mind and spirits that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain, something unpleasant, challenges. And sometimes it means walking with fear hand in hand. I'm going to share with you how I practice courage and there are different ways of practicing courage. The first thing is recognize your courage. This is so, so, so important. I acknowledge situations where I have been courageous. This is so important because especially when we are, you know, in moments that we don't believe in ourselves or that things go wrong, we think like we are not courageous. I can't do this. I won't do this. This is not happening to me. Life is not to me. Life is not for me. It's against me. And all these things, what it all is happening in your life. Very important at that moment is like really recognize the moments that you have been courageous in your life. When were you courageous? For example, when you were negotiating a contract, when you had this amazing relationship, maybe you were fearful to approach the person, but anyway, you did it. And out of that came a beautiful relationship. And maybe you have moved to another country. For example, what I remember for myself is like, you know, I used to be very, very, very bad in my opinion when I was in high school school with English in English uh, uh, I didn't like it I was speaking Turkish and Dutch and I didn't like English I was like I can't do this but in my early 20s when I moved to another country all of a sudden I started working at an international school and the first year was really really difficult for me because I had to teach in English and I was like my English is not really well but the more I practice and practice and practice and practice and practice I owned it I was like hey actually now I became an international teacher that can teach in English so I recognize oh I was courageous there I didn't stop myself by I can't do it I don't like it so let me not just do it I just did it anyway another thing that I was courageous was I also think hey Uslem you actually have moved four times to a different country and each time you left people behind you you left the things that you have built for you and for others behind you and just you started again so I actually practiced uh, starting from scratch and when I think of these situations I think like actually I am courageous and for you for anyone that wants to practice courage there have been things in your life either in the area of relationship either in the area of finance either in the area of friendship either in the area of uh, career either in the area of anything sports maybe you were so scared when you were a teenager for any sport that you wanted to do maybe you were in the past you were scared to practice a sport you thought i'm not good at it but you became for example a runner a swimmer or any other uh, sport you practice i would say what i do i think about moments and situations that i was courageous so the first thing as i said recognize your courage that's really important another thing what is really important what i do is when i want to practice courage i ask myself the question if i want to take any action on something what is the worst thing that could 
happen. For example, I was doing this podcast channel for the past three and a half years, but for the past year, we kind of moved it also to YouTube. If you want to start a YouTube channel and you are having a totally different job, but you are passionate about, let's say you're passionate about cars or you're passionate about personal growth, you want to start a YouTube channel and share your wisdom around personal growth. But something is holding you back. You're a bit hesitant, maybe procrastinating, maybe fearful even. Ask yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen? Okay, then you have an answer on that. Ask again, what is the worst thing that could happen? Then you have an answer on that. What is the worst thing that could happen? I always think like, I'm not going to die from it. No, I am just going to try this out. Let's see if it works. And I give myself a certain amount of time. That's not one day. That's not one week. That's not one month usually. I give usually six to one year time. And even if I feel inside this is not working, I give myself more time because each time when I am creating things, I am learning one other thing. I'm also learning how I should not work. Actually, I can tell you with the YouTube and the podcast, each episode is so special for me because I'm learning from my guests. I'm learning what my audience listens, what my audience wants. I'm also learning what to do different the next time. So ask yourself the question, what is the worst thing that could happen? And for me, the worst thing is that I could die and the rest, I can figure it out always. That's my belief system. Another thing, what is really important when you want to practice courage, how I do it, I just stop for a moment. I pause and I used to have a lot of difficulties with that, but I pause and I just go inwards. I just put my hands actually really on my heart and close my eyes. I ask my heart, what is the next step for me? What is the next step? So people around me, they don't know the next step. They might give me feedback, but my heart knows the answer. And people around me, I can seek advice. I can see, have a mentor and ask questions. But at the end, I always decide with my heart. And that takes also practice. It's a muscle you should train each time. Another thing what I do is I acknowledge my fear, but do not pay attention to it. I think it's so, so important that you acknowledge your fear. It's, as I said, Courage does not mean denial of fear. That's anxiety. But if you really accept your fear, okay, I am fearful for this. I am fearful when I move to another country that I will not have any connection with other people. I am fearful if I move to another country that I won't be able to find a job. Whatever all these things is. What I would do is I write it down. Once I write it down, I put it really out of my system and I look at it and I don't give after that any attention to it because it's only fear. It's only a thought in my mind and there are many, many other thoughts. I could also give the thought, everything works out for me, more attention than I am fearful for. And maybe in my past, and not maybe for sure, I've practiced so many times, I'm fearful for this, I'm fearful for that, I'm fearful for that. Nowadays, since the past eight, nine years, I'm practicing each time I am courageous and fearful. Being fearful comes also up, but I choose to not pay attention to these tasks. I just observe them look at them and often also write them down. And after I write it down, I just cross it. I'm like, this is it so far, not more. Another thing what I do to practice courage is I think about a role model of someone that I feel she or he is practicing courage. I feel like this person is so courageous. Sometimes I even think she's fearless, but then I think, hey, remember, it's not about the absence of fear. Most probably she walks with fear hand in hand, and maybe at some moment she might be fearless. Anyhow, I think about that person and I get creative. It's almost like drawing a picture when I was a child. I just get creative and I write down what kind of belief system, what kind of beliefs would this person have that is practicing courage? For example, this person would have the belief, I am confident and would really feel the emotions of being, I am confident. I'm not talking about the words or the sentence. No, really feeling inside the emotion of I am confident. The only person that approves me is me, is myself. I'm a leader. I am worthy to be courageous. 
I embrace the unknown and I am comfortable with the unknown. I'm trustworthy. I shine in the face of adversity. Adversity helps me only to grow. I am open to change. Change is part of my life. One other thing is when I practice courage is I am fully, fully aware practicing courage is a muscle that needs to be trained. It's not like if I practice courage today, tomorrow, I am a little bit better, but it doesn't mean like I'm just courageous. I'm not fearful anymore. I take all the steps. No, no, no. I should really practice it every time again. When I'm in a situation that I feel like, hey, I actually want to be courageous. I want to do that. So it's a muscle you should train. One other thing when I practice courage is I focus on the person or the people that I am serving instead of the critic in my head. When I make this YouTube video on practicing courage, I'm not focused on oh my god she didn't like it I got a really bad comment I may be paying attention to it like oh maybe he or she is right I could make it even better but I mainly focus on the people that I can serve the people that I can help maybe that's only one person maybe it's only two people and that's fine and the last thing I think maybe the most important what I really love when I feel like hey I want to do this I feel always like I just have the metaphor of an ocean. When I jump in the ocean, either it's cold, it's warm, or it's really big, there are a lot of fish. I know once I am in the ocean, I can swim. When I want to do something, I think starting a business, either having a podcast guest on the show, either uh, having a very difficult conversation, either saying to someone, I actually really like you. I decided for myself years ago, I just jump in the ocean because I know when I jump in the ocean, I can swim. And what is the worst thing that could happen? If you have liked this video, please share this video with anyone that can benefit from this video. Give a like so it can be seen by many other people if you think this video is very valuable. If you have any comments on what topics we should cover next time, let us also know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and listening on any podcast channel. Bye for now and have a courageous, beautiful day.